God has revealed himself through Christ, the totality of God, all the revelations that you have ever desired to know about God, all the fullness of God has been made revealed to us through Christ Jesus. Even all the names that we studied last time, then all the names of God, they have found their full revelation where? In Christ. Seeing Christ is seeing the Father. Everything that Christ is, is what the Father is. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on the time of the hour when you're watching this uh, telecast. I know you're blessed. I am blessed. Beholding Christ is the show. My name is Ben Fetcher and this is Wema TV and this is a place to be. This is a place where the, the revelation of Christ fills us, fills our hearts. And when Christ is revealed to us, we see ourselves as he is, because as he is, so are we in this world. The better we see and the more we see him, the more we see ourselves. Because the Bible says, the word of God is a mirror. Christ is the word of God and the word of God is a mirror. Christ is our mirror to show us not how we ought to be, but how we are. Because when we see him, we see ourselves in him. Actually, when we see him, we are supposed to know he is the definition of us. Praise be to God. Again, this is a wonderful moment. Uh, in our last episode, we talked about God revealed in the Old Testament and the different names of God. But we said that he revealed himself in the, New, in the Old Testament in bits, in uh, different and various instances, to different people at different ways. Some knew got to know them as Jehovah Rapha, uh, others got to know him as Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, uh, Jehovah Tzidikenu. And there are so many, many, many other names that we, even didn't, we, we didn't even mention that are in the Old Testament talking about God. But this is the, the last thing that we said in our last episode, that all these names were wonderful, they are great, but they did not carry the fullness of the revelation of God because all these names God revealed himself to these different people at different instances in different ways in bits and bits and bits and I can remind you where we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 we read verse 1 he says throughout the, our history God has spoken God spoke to our ancestors by his prophets in many different ways the revelation he gave them was only a fragment a peace at a time, a peace at a time. They know him as the Lord our peace at a time. They know him as the Lord our healer at a time. They know him as the Lord Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd at a time. They know him as Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner at a time. They know him at different times, at different instances. He says that this truth was just building up. They didn't have the entirety of the truth or of the revelation of who God is. And this is why mostly because they didn't know who God is in his totality. There are so many things that happened in the Old Testament that some of them were ascribed to God and they were not from God. They didn't know God. They didn't even know the devil. So everything that happened, they only ascribed it to a supreme being and they only thought of a supreme being being, being God. So everything that happened, they thought it was God. Some bad things happened, they ascribed it to God. But when Christ came, hallelujah, I love talking about Christ because Christ is the perfect, the full revelation of God. So last time we talked about the, those names and those different revelations that different people had in the Old Testament. But today I want us now to shift and see God in his totality and see God in his full revelation, how he has revealed himself completely, praise be to God. Because today, for us who live in the New Testament, we have the totality of God. We have the fullness of God. We have God in his wholeness, in his completeness. Praise be to God. He no longer reveals to himself to us in bits, in small truths, in fragment at a time, in bits at a time, in small portions at a time. Now he has revealed himself in his completeness, in his wholeness. Praise be to God. And as we were finishing the last episode, we said that the greatest revelation of God to humanity is Father. Hallelujah. Father settles it all. All those other revelations, all those other fragments of his a revelation that they had. All those portions, all those pieces, all those different uh, levels of 
uh, knowing God that they had has been brought together into one name, into one great revelation, Father. Hallelujah. Something you realize that in the Old Testament, there is no single place where you see them calling him you see them calling God Father. They used to call him God. He used to call himself God of Israel. Praise be to God. Unless it was in the prophetic messages. where, Like when Isaiah spoke about a, a, a son is given. And he says, he says a child is born and a son is given. He is a mighty counselor. He also refers to him as our everlasting father. That was prophetic. Because at that moment he had not revealed himself in his completeness. In his totality as father. Well, hallelujah. But glory be to God that now we know him as father. Now he has revealed himself as father in Christ Jesus. We read Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Now today I want us to go to Hebrews chapter 1 verse number 2. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 talked about how God revealed himself in diverse manners to, our, to, our, uh, to the guys who lived before us, to the Old Testament folks. And uh, that is what we studied last time. But today, I want us to drop down to verse 2 of the same Hebrews chapter 1. He says, uh, uh, let me pick it up from verse 1, then we come to verse 2, which is our point or our verse of emphasis. He says, God, who at various times, I'm speaking, I'm reading from the New King James, and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, verse 2, has in these last days, hallelujah, which last days? Uh, some people when they some people when they hear about the last days they ask question when do they when did the last days start the last days does not begin when uh, uh, someone became the president of whichever republic the last days began when christ came praise be to god that is when the last days began now he says that god has in these last days Spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sin, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Let me pick it up again using the, the Passion Translation. Verse 2, the Bible says, but to us, God, uh, but to us living in these last days, God now has spoken openly in the language of his son. In other words, he has spoken through his son. And I want you to see, I want you to see the word spoken. The, the, the word spoken there. He says, God has spoken. That is in the past. So that word spoken is in past participle. Praise be to God. He has spoken and he has spoken with finality. How? Through his son. He has spoken. He is not going to speak again. He has spoken. The final message, the final revelation of God has been made available to humanity through Christ Jesus. He says in these last days God has openly in the language of a son. That is what the the Passion Translation says, and he has spoken to us openly through his son, and he has appointed him heir of all things, for through him God created the panorama of all things and all time. Praise be to God. So when Christ came, he came to reveal God in a different way. He came to reveal God as a father to us. He came as a son. The Bible says, and to us a son of given is given. So when you see the Bible talking about sonship, he is also talking about fatherhood. Where there is a son, there is a father. And where there is a father, there is a son. So he was given to us as a son, that is Jesus Christ, to reveal his father. Praise be to God. There is this common verse we all know in the book of John chapter 3, verse number 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have it an everlasting life. Then in Hebrews he says that Jesus or Christ has become the first begotten. So before Jesus died, he was the only son. He was the only begotten. But after death, he is no longer the, the only begotten. Now he is the first begotten. Why? Because John 1, 12 says that to all that believed in him, to all that accepted this gift of the son, to, her, to them gave he power to become sons 
of God. So now God is our father. Praise be to God. Whenever you see sonship, you also talk, ab uh, you also talk about fatherhood. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Colossians, we are talking about God revealing himself as father. And God has revealed himself through Christ, the totality of God. All the revelations that you have ever desired to know about God, all the fullness of God has been made revealed to us through Christ Jesus. Even all the names that we studied last time, then all the names of God, they have found their full revelation where? In Christ hallelujah hallelujah praise be to god let me read uh, colossians chapter 1 verse number 15 colossians chapter 1 verse number 15 colossians 1 verse number 15 the bible says mm -hmm, i believe we are there he says he is the divine portrait the true likeness of the invisible god and the firstborn heir of all creation for through the son everything was created i want just to emphasize on verse 15 he says with the uh, the passion translation he is the divine portrait Ooh, oh my god he is the exact image he is the perfect picture of the divine who he's talking about christ if you want to know god in his totality you see christ the when you see christ you know who god is hallelujah in the old testament they could not go they could not know god in his fullness but now we have the privilege because god has put on flesh praise be to god they had bits of him they had uh, bits of the truth. They had truth which was building up, but now the entirety of truth has come through Jesus Christ. He says in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 1, using the, tra the, the Passion Translation, he tells us that they had bits of truth. The truth was building up. So it was in the process. The truth was building up, but on the arrival of Jesus, he declares openly that I am the truth. Uh -huh. In John chapter 1, verse 16, 17, he says that the law came, uh, uh, the law came by, uh, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So the coming of Christ was the coming of the truth. The truth that was building up in the Old Testament, now it has come in its, its finality, in, in his totality, because truth is not something it is not an it the truth is him it's the it's the word it's christ himself he is the truth hallelujah now he says that this truth this jesus christ is the divine portrait the true likeness of the invisible god let me take it up with the new king james version he says in the Verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. He is the image of the invisible God. So Christ came to reveal God. Christ came to reveal God. Hallelujah. And we see this, all the revelations that were building up in the Old Testament, the revelation that we, we read about, the, the revelation of God as Jireh, as Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah Elohim, uh, Jehovah uh, El Shaddai, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, Jehovah uh, Rohi our shepherd, Shalom our peace, Jehovah El Roy, the Lord that sees us, the Jehovah Tzidikenu, all those different revelations now, they have found their oneness, their unity, their union, where? In Christ. Hallelujah. Now, when we see Christ, we see God who is our righteousness. When we see Christ, we see God who is our healer. The Bible says that by his stripes we were healed. Rapha has found himself in Christ, the Lord that healed us. Christ is our healer. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Christ is our provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jireh has found its totality in Christ. Praise be to God. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is present. He says he is with us forevermore. Christ in us. The Bible says in Colossians 1.27, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we are not looking for him outside. He is in us. Praise be to God. He, he refers himself as the Lord, our, uh, our righteousness. 
Sidikenu has found its totality in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says that he knew no sin. He committed no sin, but God made him to be sin for us that he that he might be made our righteousness, that we might be made the righteousness of God. God now has been made our righteousness in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, from verse 30, talks about God, uh, Christ becoming our wisdom, our sanctification, and our righteousness. So, Tzidikenu has found its totality in Christ. But above all those now, God has revealed himself not just as uh, uh, the, the different revelations that he had in the Old Testament, but now he has revealed himself as Father. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we can see this in the book of John chapter 14. So when Christ came, he came as the fullness of God. He came as the revelation of God as Father. John chapter number 14. John chapter number 14. I want us to see something there. Hallelujah. Oh, Jadebo Honda, Kizegla Bo Shadiha. The Bible says in the book of uh, uh, John chapter 14 from verse number 6, I mentioned about Jesus saying that he is the truth. He says, Jesus said to him, uh, to, uh, to Nicodemus, he said, I am the way, the uh, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm -hmm. Now the Father is revealed from verse 7. The Father revealed. God is our father revealed. He was not revealed as father in the, in the Old Testament, but now he is revealed here as God, our father. Listen to the words of Jesus. And I want to read from the New King James Version. It says, uh, they had a discussion with the, the disciples, like they were talking with Philip and the other disciples. So in verse 7, he says, if you had known me, you'd have known the father. Mm -hmm. Maybe I started from verse 1. He says, let, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in, my, in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. This is Jesus speaking. And if I go and pray, uh, prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you may know. And the way you know. Then in verse 5, Thomas asked a question. He asked, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? So, so Jesus replied to him in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, if you had known me, you should have known my father and from now on you know him and have seen him so jesus is uh, presenting himself as the perfect revelation of the father he says if you have known me if you would have known me you would have known the father why because i'm the perfect revelation of god as the father the old testament folks knew him in different ways because truth was still building up but the fullness of truth reveals god as our fathers. If you had known me, you'd have known the father. So like many of us, Philip asked a question again. And actually Philip said in verse 8, he says, Lord, show us the father and it is sufficient for us. The only thing that we desire from you, Jesus, show us the father. So they wanted to know the father. And this is how Jesus responded to uh, Philip. He said in verse 9, have I been with you for so long, Philip, and you have not known the father? Mm. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? So Jesus is explaining this. He says, I have been with you for so long, Philip. We have walked with you, but you have not known the Father. Anyone who has known me, anyone who has seen me, has seen the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So seeing Christ is seeing the Father. Everything that Christ is, is what the Father is. Jesus once said that I see what my father do and what he does, that is what I do. So the representation of God, the father to the world is made known to us through Christ. Remember, Jesus again says uh, in John chapter 1 verse 28, he says, no one has seen God at any time. No one has ever seen the Father, but the only Son has declared him. So Jesus is the one who has come to declare God 
as the Father. Praise be to God. No one ever saw God, but now Christ has come to declare him. Christ has come to reveal him as Father. And he says uh -huh, in verse 10, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So what is uh, Jesus saying? He is saying that I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. All the revelation that the world has been waiting for is now available to you. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Hallelujah. In John chapter 20, John chapter 20, verse 17, after Jesus died, he, was, he died, he was buried, and he rose from the dead. When he resurrected, he appeared to some guys. He appeared to some guys, and I want us to see them in the book of John chapter 20 from verse 17. He appeared to Mary, Mary Magdalene. I want to read verse 17. So let me start from verse 14. Now when she had, she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. This is uh, Mary Magdalene. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you, uh, where are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him. So this woman was thinking that Jesus is the gardener. So he said, uh, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, if you have carried the body of Christ away, kindly tell me, where have you laid him? And I'll take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni. So when Jesus called her, Mary recognized her and she said, Rabboni. Rabboni, which means great teacher or rabbi. Then in verse 17, our key verse for today says, Jesus said to, uh, say, uh, Jesus said to her, do not cling to me for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father. I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So Christ's revelation is that God is our father. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. Romans chapter 8 verse number 15. Romans 8 verse 15. So this is the greatest revelation of God. I read from verse 12. Uh, verse, uh, let me read from verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. I said whenever you see sons, you must also understand that there is a father. God is our father because we are sons of God. So we are not just servants. We are not slaves of God. He has become our father. This is the privilege that the Old Testament folks never had. They knew him as God, Jehovah Jireh. They knew him, they knew him as Jehovah Rapha. They knew him as Jehovah Shalom. But now to us, he is Father. Look at this, he says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So in the Old Testament, they were bound to fear. Though they, got, they knew God in different ways, they had different revelations, but they didn't know him fully. So they were bound by fear. But now he speaks to us in verse 15 and says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. This is what I also call the spirit of sonship. The spirit of sonship, the spirit of adoption. John 1, 12 says, To them that believed in him and accepted him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. And this is the spirit that has been brought through Christ. The spirit of sonship by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Now this is the greatest revelation of God in the New Testament. This is the greatest revelation of God. This is this is not truth building up. This is the truth in its maturity, truth in its finality, that God is Abba Father. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I know there are so many things that we can talk, we can say about this, but I want you to understand that God is your Father. Hallelujah. And when, even when Jesus was teaching the disciples to pray, if you go to the book of Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9, this is how he taught them that when you pray, pray like this, 
our father who art in heaven our father so what god what jesus brought is a relationship a relationship now we have a relationship with god he is not a stranger to us neither are we strangers to him he is our father hallelujah when you get this revelation you cannot be beaten by anything you live above every circumstance you live above every situation because you know god is your father hallelujah when you can't remember all the other names that the new test uh, the old testament folks had about god jehovah jireh jehovah rafa jehovah nisi jehovah tsidikenu jehovah shalom jehovah shama this one wonderful revelation that christ has brought to us and this is the truth in its growth in its maturity in in the truth in its finality is that god is your father hallelujah praise be to god and something we know about father when a son calls out to his father the father will always pay attention praise be to god the greatest prayer you can pray to god is calling him father actually the word abba abba father abba 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 is a greek name which means daddy hallelujah so to us he is daddy to the world he is a judge to the world he is all those different things they may fear him they are in the bondage of fear but to us he is daddy when you know god as daddy you can approach him anytime anywhere using any language praise be to god you don't have to use the king james language to speak to your daddy you don't have to use the 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 elizabethan the thou shalt thou wonderful thou great king thou cometh you know those words no when you have your daddy when you have god as your daddy when you know him as your daddy you can speak to him anytime praise be to god and he will always pay attention hallelujah so from today onwards i want you to have this understanding that god in the fullness of time in the totality and the maturity of the truth he has revealed to he, uh, he has revealed himself to the world and to us who believe as father therefore we have not received the spirit of bondage to uh, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but the spirit of adoption the spirit of sonship whereby we cry Abba Father right now God is inside you and God wants you to know him as father he is your father he is a father and when you talk about a father we talk of relationship we talk of provision we talk of uh, security we talk of uh, being protected because he is your father hallelujah i want to pray with you right now in Jesus name as we had this episode as we had this program in Jesus name father we thank you because you love us we thank you that to us you are father and to you we are sons we will not lack anything because god you are our father thank you for revealing yourself with this final uh, finality and this final truth that you are our father thank you for my viewers today i call them blessed let them, let them experience the embrace of you as a father it is in jesus name we pray and we believe amen 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 thank you for watching ben fetcher is my name beholding christ is the name of the show and this is Wema TV keep locked and stay tuned to Wema TV you are blessed indeed in Jesus name amen and amen